What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of The Breakdown. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at OKCBoy. Uh, it's, it's spelled the exact same way as my username on here is. So let's get right into this. This is a topic that uh, I have a couple of other videos uh, within my channel that kind of revolve around this topic. Um, so yesterday it was approved that the Northwestern football team could unionize. So now with them unionizing, now they go from athlete to now considered employees, and now they can negotiate. And this is really a you know a really really huge step uh, moving forward for you know for college football athletes, particularly in football and basketball, having more of a voice. So men's football because it's only men's football and men's basketball because those are the two big. Those are the main two sports that generate most of the money. Um, so this video, it could be long, but just bear with me. I got a lot of a lot of good points to hit. Um, now let's just uh, get right into this. Um, you know, for for them to have a voice, like I said, I was um, I was a Division One um, basketball player, so I think it's great that that the athletes should have a voice. However, I think that they should voice their I think they should be more so voicing over other topics first before they get into the uh, should college athletes get paid because th that's that's really what this is all about is should college athletes get paid and I've heard both sides of the argument and I'll give you guys my side of the argument and feel free at the after you listen to this to give your opinion um, both sides of the argument make complete sense I mean. Like I said, this is going to be one of the, the I, th I think that as this goes on, it'll probably go to the Supreme Court. And this is probably going to be one of the best, the, the greatest uh, court battles of all time. Um, but I've heard both sides of the argument. And in my previous videos, I, I, I've already mentioned that, you know, Division One, um, Division One athletes, they already get paid in the form of scholarship checks. So, so the athletes that are on, the athletes that are on scholarship, they already get scholarship checks, um, especially when they live off campus, uh, to compensate them for their rent and then things like food, things like that each month. Now, and they're getting a free education. Um, so some people don't value an education like they used to, but I mean, hey, in these tough economic times, look, look at look at the look at the actual statistics. The people that actually have degrees are are the ones beating out people who don't have degrees, especially for the good jobs. And even and even when in 2008, 2009, when things whenever we went into a recession, the people who were able to maintain or the people who were still able to get jobs were those who did have degrees. So do your research on that. Um, but anyway, uh, the average tuition uh, in, in America is about twenty thousand dollars per year. Some some schools are more than that. Some schools are less than that. Um, but the average tuition is uh, twenty thousand dollars. Now the average person, the average person, whenever I've speak, whenever I've spoken with people on this issue, the average person will say, "Well, yeah, they're getting a free to they're getting a free education, but compared to the money that's being generated, it's uh, it it." It's 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 simply a drop in the bucket bucket. It's simply just it you know the the money that's given out in scholarship money is 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 just pennies compared to what they're what these what these schools and what these teams are generating um, you know with TV deals and, and things like that. Now, if you compare this to one individual player, yes, it is pennies. Um, a lot of arguments say, well, the coach is making two million dollars a year, three million dollars a year. Um, well, let's let's let me rewind here for you guys, folks. If the average tuition is twenty thousand dollars, right, give or take, and then after that, student gets scholarship money uh, each month, you know, you're probably looking at about maybe twenty three thousand uh, dollars, twenty five thousand dollars, somewhere in there. I'm not going to get into how much student, how much kids make in scholarship check money. So, like I said, if if you're if you're if you, if you're comparing it to one player, then sure, you know if 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 if, if all these if these weren't team sports and they, these were individual sports, then yeah, I, I would say you know the NCAA is getting over on the players. Uh, but in 
in all context, you can't compare it to one player. So let's go back to the twenty thousand dollar figure. Um, there in football, in college football, there's eighty five scholarships. Um, so multiply eighty five, um, multiply twenty thousand by eighty five, and see what number you come up with. Um, I'll actually do it while I'm while I'm actually on here, and. I came up with a mil- with 1.7 million. So 1.7 million because that's really the way you have to do it. So you got coaches making $2 million or 3 and $4 million, but yet the school is dishing out $1.7 million or more in scholarship money. So really th- there's a balance there if you, if you ask me. Um, like I said, it's not fair. You, you can't just compare it to one player. You have to compare it to all. And if you want to go further than that, why don't we take all the big schools that make all the money and then multiply how much, multiply all their scholarships together and see what money, how much money you come up with. Uh, you might start getting into multi-millions and then you might start getting into the billions um, as well in scholarship money. So really, I really don't think there's, there's an argument to say, well, you know, you're, 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 you're just dropping pennies when you can't. You, you can't you, you can't make your argument based off one player because honestly in college football we don't watch college we don't watch college football or college basketball because of one player we watch the we watch the sport because because of the teams um, now in the pros it's different I mean yeah well, we're gonna turn on the TV to watch Kobe Bryant LeBron James Dwayne Wade uh, Tim Duncan we're, we're, you know the Garnets we're gonna turn on the TV you know to watch the Carmelo Anthony's the Blake Griffins. But college sports is completely different. We do not watch college college athletics for one player because if, if that or for or for a group of players because if that was the case, when when they all graduate and, and or whenever whenever they all leave, I wouldn't say graduate, whenever they all leave and go to the pros, then we, we then we simply wouldn't watch the sport anymore. Um, so that's one thing you have to take into consideration. Uh, like I said, start you know start multiplying how much money in scholarships is given to all these players combined and then multiply that. And then you would see that, I mean, the school's coming up off, coming up, coming off of a lot of money to give these kids um, a free education. Um, Secondly, um, paying the athletes, um, you know, could the athletes get paid more in scholarship check money? Sure. You know, I'm all in favor of the athletes getting paid more in, in scholarship money. I mean, a little bit of extra money, you know, per month, uh, isn't, isn't going to hurt. Um, also, um, you know, I think paying the athletes, it, I mean, let's, let let's, let's talk big picture here. Okay. In, 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 in the real world, in the economy, when, when you're forced to, when you are forced to maybe pay out, you know, extra money and, and benefits, what happens, you know, in some cases, not all cases, but in some cases, some people get laid off to be able to compensate for giving other people uh, a, a big, a huge, significant raise. Because in in the real world, top executives and business owners, they're not gonna they're not gonna lose out on any extra money to they're not gonna lose out on any extra money to to help compensate to overcompensate. Uh, everybody else. So in order for the business owners to keep the money that's in their pocket, they're going to lay off other people to, to so then that they can pay, you know, workers A, B, and C, and then still be able to put the money in their pocket. So by paying these college athletes, primarily the ones that are in football and basketball, what do you think is going to happen to the other sports in college sports? And granted, yeah, I mean, you know, the women's sports, um, the track, the baseball, um, the wrestling, those sports do not generate as much money as college basketball or football. I'm not disagreeing with you there. But that um, but if you if you start paying the athletes, then then for those athletes, I just see a lot of programs being dropped from college from a lot of these schools. Now, some programs will, will be able to make it. But I just see a lot of these programs being dropped when when most college at, when most co- when most college athletic um, departments they don't operate in the black anyway. Most college athletic departments are operating 
you know, in, in the negative. You only have a handful of college athletic departments that are operating in the black. And, and then out of those, some of those get subsidies to get money that comes from a different source so, so that they can operate in the black. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, is this really fair to, you know, those people that play baseball or run track or, or, or women's basketball and wrestling? Because granted, those sports don't generate as much money, but I mean, they work just as hard at their sport as anybody else does at their sport. And, you know, paying the paying these players, it's only going to paying these players is only it, I, I, that's what I see. I mean, if you look at I mean, if you look at the money and you you, you know about things, paying these players, it's going to cause a lot of these other programs to go under. Um, so that that's another thing. And, you know, that, that that's just that's just not fair to, you know, to to to, to those people who, you know, who, who have aspirations of of playing, you know, a sport. You know, you know, it's not fair to a baseball player who wants to play baseball at a certain school or, or, or somebody that's in wrestling. that's always wanted to wrestle for a certain school. Um, so, like I said, and it, it's, it's just going to ruin the game. I mean, um, you know, now, you know, you know, players are kind of some players are kind of already bought anyway. But by paying the players in football, you might as well just take all the power conference schools and put them all in one league. Just put them all in one league. They have their own championship. And then the other schools that aren't in power conferences, they have their own championship. Um, Because it's just going to ruin the game of college athletics. Uh, Something needs to be done. Um, Another thing, you know, why aren't we talking about things like, uh, you know, players going to class? Um, you know, in, 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 in college basketball, we, we have this rule that, you know, the one and done rule. Well, I didn't know if you guys knew. I mean, it, right now it's NCAA tournament time. Really, that student was, you know, if, if, they, if they already knew they were going to go one and done, they could, they could enroll in, in a bunch of easy classes and then just enroll in 12 hours of, for the second semester and not even attend a day of class and still be eligible to play in the NCAA tournament. Or if they showed up to class, that they could somebody could have all Fs in every class and be failing and still be eligible to play in the NCAA tournament. Now, what's wrong with that? You know, now you you tell me there's not something wrong there. Uh, you know, um, you know those are those are things that the NC those are things that that they need to be talking about. The NCAA needs to you know needs to reform. Another thing that the NCAA needs to reform is that. When the, when a when a player signs a scholarship, when they when they sign a letter of intent, that letter of intent is really for one year, and then and then and then after that one year, that scholarship is then renewed. That scholarship is then renewed. It's not a four year scholarship. So, I think players need to be guaranteed that you know if if something happens that you know they get hurt, blow a knee out, that that players are still going to get their education. But you don't see players arguing about this stuff. The players are arguing about the money. Um, you, you have, um, you know, you, you have a lot of college. You have a lot of people who don't go to the pros, but but yet and still they contribute it to their team. And college coaches will put them in easy classes, maybe not classes that put them on part of graduate or, or maybe not anything that's going to help them once they once college is over with but they just they kept them eligible so that they pretty much kept them eligible so that they could win games but after college was over and they didn't make the pros you know they're lost in society and their you know their their education really doesn't help them get into any type of jobs you don't see the 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 players in college arguing about this they just want to argue about getting paid so whether they get paid or not it i really don't see these none of these problems that i just that I just named out, none of these problems are going to be fixed. The same stuff is going to be happening. Uh, like I said, some players already get paid anyway. So now if you if you make it a law to where they do get paid, how much do you think the boosters will be throwing under the table? You see you see the problem here when you when you allow just a little bit, when you if you allow 1 inch, some people are going to try to take a yard with this thing. A yard. And then it, it'll truly be just people 
buying out players. That's that's truly what it'll be. And you know, if you know, can you imagine a player going to a school and then he gets hurt and then you're paying these players and then he gets hurt? I mean, I mean, money is money, and people aren't going to pay out money to a guy that gets hurt and he can't play anymore. He'll lose his scholarship and then. All of a sudden, he he won't be going to that school, and he probably won't be making any money anymore. So, I mean, <laughs> paying these players, that, that's not going to iron out anything. It's not going to iron out anything unless everything is fixed. And I think those are issues that need to be talked about first rather than players getting paid. Um, to me, it's, uh, like I said, the players are already getting paid. Um you know, if, if like I said, if 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 you guys never played Division One college athletics, then you would have no idea. Um, why, why don't you, if you guys know somebody that plays uh, basketball or football at a major school, ask them, and if they stay off campus, ask them how much do they get paid in scholarship check money. Ask them all the benefits that they already get, and then you'll be amazed. And then, then ask yourself, do, do, do they still deserve to get paid? Um, you know, like I said, mu- multiply 85 times about 20,000 and see how much the school is dishing out in free education. And then ask yourself, do, do the students still deserve to be paid? So leave your comment below. I want to hear about it. Um, you guys know where I stand on it. And get out there. Follow me on Twitter. I'm out.